So if you want to catch fish like this, whilst still being able to enjoy one of these, then this is the video for you. So today's little session is a method that personally I absolutely love. And I'm not going to say it's a forgotten method, but it's something you don't see very often, so it's become a rare thing. And it's simply bomb a maggot. And all I'm going to be doing is loose feeding maggots and fishing over it with a little small bomb. So I'm basically ledgering. And don't really get any simpler than that, but it's such an effective method. Uh, and I'm going to go through the little finer details while I'm fishing and talk to you as to why I think it's a great method and try and show you some of the little tricks and bits and bobs that I actually put into this, which, you know, I'm sure everybody's fished a bomb and maggot in the, in the past, but I just think there's an odd little way to fish it, which comes to down to the tackle, the way you present it. Um, but let's talk to you about that in a little bit more detail as we go through it. So one of the most fundamental things you're gonna need is a catapult because we're gonna be loose feeding. And I actually think that's the key ingredient to why this method works so well. In years gone by when we fished a lot of rivers, obviously you would loose feed and you know the floor takes your maggots away and it draws fish in. And drawing fish in, I think, is what uh, sets this method apart from today's modern pole fishing where more often than not we've got a little cup on Andrew's top kit and we're just tapping a few maggots in and because when you're catapulting maggots and I'm going to be you know sort of fishing at what I would say is a comfortable limit of this catapult and that is around 16 17 18 meters and what's actually happened is I've catapulted them in apart from all the ducks and seagulls that seem to love maggots as well is that they've spread over a bit of an area now today's a great day for it because it's quite still um, so obviously you're not, you're not getting your wind blowing them everywhere, but don't worry about that if it is windy because ultimately you will find that your maggots all land in an area and that's consistent. And the beauty about a bomb is that you can cast to where the maggots are landing. So you can search the area and because as I said you're drawing fish in, basically there's constant amount of bait falling through the water and it's pulling fish in from a wide area. And it's a great debate, and it sometimes goes through my mind, and even confuses me as an angler in my own fishing, is why we're so obsessed by accuracy when I want to sort of prove to you today that accuracy is not the be-all and end-all. But I think that's a great debate that we could have at another time, but just to put an outline on it, I personally think that's because when you're targeting, let's say, bream, and you're only looking for five or six fish, then you have to make sure that everything's uh, stacked in your favour. So you're sort of concentrating your bait in an area and you're presenting a bait right on top of that and you're trying to get the maximum from your swim. But this type of fishing, um, and obviously in a little session today, not a match, we're just um, pleasure fishing. We're just looking to have a great day's fishing. We're gonna have, we brought a flask, we're going to have a cup of tea. It's winter, you'll see by obviously the background. Um, it's been really cold, these lakes were frozen recently. But there's still a lot of bites to be had and by feeding in that way um, I think we can actually create a, an area of fish and we're going to catch roach, we'll probably catch some perch, I'm hoping to have an odd skimmer and there's always a chance for a carp as well. And what more would you want from a day's pleasure fishing than a bit of a mixed bag, we, something that's going to pull back a little bit as well if you do hook a carp. So that's sort of the first and foremost most important things. I brought a couple of pints of maggots. Um, and that's it, catapult and some maggots. And let's then talk to you about the tackle that we're using. So equipment, nice and simple. I've got a 10 foot really soft rod. This is a Preston Superior SL, very forgiving rod, which is great if you are gonna hook bigger fish, it'll just give that little bit of leeway and also allow you to fish smaller hooks and lighter lines. I've just got my 520 extremity reel on there and that's actually loaded with an 020. Now this is a new line that we're working on and basically it's uh, a very true diameter so it's quite slim uh, or 20 in diameter that's got a knot strength of about five pounds uh, but more importantly it's quite um, low stretch and sinking and that's going to help us with our bite detection and the fact that we're able to pick up 
and um, sort of connect with the fish a little bit quicker. And it, you know, more importantly, it's, it's about the bites. Then through to the business end, so that's fish straight through. Now obviously we're on a commercial fishery, so the rig has to be free running. <clears throat> and what I've actually done here is, um, if you like, I've, I've done a hybrid of what is an old fashioned method, a pattern oster, um, and I've actually made it into a modern uh, version so that it's free running. So I've actually got a little snap link swivel, as you've probably seen me do before, on my feeder rig, which is other videos showing that, but I will run through it quickly. But then I've tied a little three inch, sorry, uh, three inch uh, drop, and that's just with some eight pound version of this uh, real line. And that's tied to a bomb. I've got two or three of these with different size bombs on. It's got a little swivel at the top, and I can just clip that on and off. And now the idea of that is that, in my mind, that gives a little bit more flexibility when you're getting bites of small fish you can fish with a slack tip and the movement in that little drop in that pattern oster will just allow the fish to get a little bit more confident and you'll get a better bite and you'll be able to connect with your fish a little bit better now years ago we would have just fished a fixed pattern oster uh, with a long link a long drop and that would have done the job but make sure that you observe fishery rules and that's a nice little free running version of that uh, traditional system I've basically put a long tail on that. In fact, it's so long it's got stuck in my trousers, look. Um, and that is 500 mil or 18 inch hook length tied to my 250 mil or 10 inch drop. So when I show you the rig, you'll see what I do. And then this allows me to fish a long hook length. That's 750 mil um, in total length. And that just allows slightly longer drop so if I'm catching roach and fish off the bottom because of course we we'll lose feeding it's not feeder fishing this we we'll lose feeding over the top and as the bait falls through the fish are intercepting it I think it's the key to its success so you need to give the fish chance to intercept that bait and hook themselves so a slightly longer tail you can do that if you want to drop it down obviously you can just put a shorter up length on to my uh, rig and that'll give you anything down to 400 milli. So that's the simple setup, and all that's left to do now is talk through with the fishing. Well, this is probably a perch because there's one thing that loves maggots, and it's perch. And there's plenty of them in Allcroft. They like particles, they like casters as well, but maggots this time of year and it is look at that one cracking fish and I think what happens this time of year the water clears up and as you've probably heard me say before that perch are sight feeders so as the water clears up I mean look at that what a lovely fish that is and things like that a great sport I mean he'll be 12 to 14 ounces. You don't need many of them to fill a net, I can tell you. And that's a bite. It's incredible. I think because of the weight of the bomb being so light, you feel almost direct at fish. It's almost like fishing direct, if you know what I mean. Oh, it's just, just small enough to lift that one. Cracking fish. Typical winter fish, nice roach, single maggot. Now, when it is um, winter time, I'm just in a cart roll out of the bank. Um, when it is winter time, you've got to kind of get your expectations in the right place because you're not going to sit here and just catch fish. For instance, you could come here at summer, you'd be able to catch fish dead short. So, as I said, we've got the opportunity today with it not being too windy to be able to feed. And this is like a standard Drennan catapult, sort of maggot waggler version. And they're landing about 18 metres. 
and I'm just flicking that bomb over the top. If it were windy, we might have to fish a little bit shorter. But I think if it was windy, we could fish shorter because the water's very clear, which is why you can't catch there. So you've kind of got to fish, you know, as comfortable as you can. And that's the thing about these videos that it's all right me sat here saying, oh, you'd need to do this, it's got to be like that, you've got to use this, you've got to cast this far. If you're out for a day's pleasure fishing, get comfortable. Fish to your comfort levels. Not even mark that maggot. Fish to your comfort levels and make it work for you. And I was just thinking about that because one of the things I want to talk to you about is this soft tip. So I've put the softest tip available for this rod in, which is an half an ounce. And it really is, the last four inches is just really, really sensitive. Just to demonstrate the tip that I was talking about that I've actually fished with today is this is an half ounce and you'll see that the end sort of four inches are really, really soft, almost parallel. And it only starts to then get a bit of tension when it comes to here. And what that means is that when you get a small fish, it'll just, that bit will almost fold. Now, obviously they're not easy to use. They can be quite difficult, you know, for wrap overs. But if you just take your time and make sure that your line's always clear with a, before you cast. And with a, with a bomb, you're probably not gonna break a tip, but just be careful with that. But there, it's such an advantage. And as I said, you don't have to use this, uh, this tip in particular, but just try and use the lightest tip you can because it means that you'll, instead of getting little rattles and little dinks, you'll actually get better pull rounds like that and then you pick up when they're on. It makes a big difference. When you're catching these sorts of fish, more often than not, you've got to strike fairly quickly at small indications. And that's a prime example. It's a small roach and you just get a little dink and I'm not saying that they're not on and you can't leave it, but in my experience, the best thing to do is just pick up nice and gentle like that and set the hook. And by having your rod on your knee, you'll definitely hit more bites. If you're catching big perch, or perch for that in instance, skimmers and carp then you can stick your rod in your butt rest and there's nothing you know more comfortable than that but while these roaches didn't swim i'm just holding my rod to make sure that i hit my bites and i'm trying to feed a big pouch of maggots and not as often so if I were waggler fishing and I were getting me hooked to fall through the water more slowly and more often, then I might be inclined to feed little and often. You'll have heard that saying little and often, where I probably feed half or a third as many maggots at a time, but more regular. Whereas because I'm actually you know, I mean, that's falling through there lovely because it's a light bomb, but that's at the bottom. So you are fishing 80% of your time on the bottom on a cast. And that is the beauty of this method. You can catch and get bites all day, but you've also got the chance of catching absolutely stunning fish like that. I mean, look at that. What a fish. Let's pop him back. Another lovely winter roach. And it's a great day sport, fishing like this. One that I certainly enjoy. And we've had roach, we've had roach bream hybrids, we've had perch, we've even had a couple of carp, big ones as well. 
which proves that a nice 10 foot rod, a little hook, now, you know, it's a nice strong little hook, B510, bomb and a couple of pints of maggots can give you a fantastic day's fishing. It really doesn't get simpler, does it? I mean, one rod, rod rest, sit on your box, fire a few maggots in, enjoy an odd cup of tea, and just enjoy your sport. And use the little tips and hints and, you know, this type of setup to find what suits you. At your local venue, you might not have to feed as much, um, you might have, you might fish closer in, so it might be a bit deeper. The colour might be different, but just try and keep an open mind and go and, go and do it, go on those feed and see what you catch. And hopefully you'll have a good session like this.